here they come. And there is Shauna. I'm going to put myself on mute for a second. Bob, you let us know whenever you want to start. We have a ton of upstaters. Yeah. Where are the downstaters? Yeah. Look at that Buffalo. I saw Ulster. Vicky said upstate. Upstate's pretty big. <laughs> Could you be a yeah. little more specific? Uh, oh, Corning. Corning. And there's Holly, my friend from NYIT, who's now an elementary counselor after being a high school counselor. Yay. Glad I to see you, help. Holly. Yeah. Nice. Yes, definitely going from high school to elementary is a promotion. Um, hey, folks, if you want, put your cameras on. Uh, it's just great to see your smiling faces on a sunny day in New York State. We're so lucky we have sunshine everywhere. Holly's North Belmore. Nice. And let's see who else we've got. Wow. Good, good. And Melissa from Queens. Yay, a downstater from my part of the world. So, Dr. Rotunda, whenever you're ready, we yeah, are, I think, Kathy and I are ready to roll. Uh, why don't we get started? Um, we're going to start um, our uh, webinar today. Its uh, topic is developing curriculum in my building. Um, and it's um, our, our presenter is Dr. Carol Day here, who um, is uh, an expert in these things. And uh, and Kath Kathleen Haley, who is a uh, Catherine, not Kathleen, Catherine Haley, who's a uh, elementary school counselor in Fayetteville Manlius. Did I get that right? Okay, good. Um, and we're just going to give them the floor and let them go. So if you have questions, put them in the chat. Um, we'll answer them either as on the flyer at the end. So I'm going to turn the screen over to Dr. Day here and we'll get going. Carol, you're muted. Muting. All right. Well, good afternoon, everybody. And so we've got a lot of information, whoops, to share with you today. And um, Dr. Rotunda, thank you for calling me an expert, but I'm not an expert. Uh, the people in the room are experts, and we're all going to learn from each other today. So, how about, for those of you that are willing and brave, drop in chat one success you've had with classroom presentations or a lesson. Just share quickly one while we get ourselves ready to roll. And we're just waiting on a few more folks to show up. And so Kathy and Bob, as you see them, please feel free to call out a few. How's that? We'll keep everybody busy and engaged. And I can leave this on full screen for now. So we'll just give it a minute and see what people come up with. So just one thing, one success. Do we have anybody who dropped something in? Uh, Sabrina's indicated she's educated students on Tourette's to help fellow students understand the student better. Excellent. Thank you, Sabrina. Using the smart board with small groups, using a responsive classroom type messaging to get things going. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Let's see if we have one more and then we'll continue. Kathy, you didn't know you had a new job today. No, it's perfect. You know, yeah. as a counselor, you wear many hats and you just roll with it. We're flexible. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Do we have one more? Or should I just keep going? Um, I don't see it. I I think we can keep going. 
Okay, thank you. So folks, while we're continuing, do think about successes you've had because you've all had successes. Your elementary counselors, you understand everything from the bottom up. Um, I spent personally only two years in elementary school and then I crossed over to the far side as a middle school counselor. So um, I admire you. Um, I really felt that I needed to be able to talk to kids on a different level. Not that you can talk to middle school kids, they have their own language. But anyway, you know what I'm talking about. So let me go to the next one. Uh huh. This is not cooperating here. So let me just move this out of the way. Sorry, guys, for a little technical glitch here. Here we go. So I'm going to try again to bring it up to full screen. So what we're going to cover today, and some of this may be redundant, and you're just going to say, we know that already, move on. So we're going to go over what NYSED expects. What does the New York State Education Department expect as per those regulations that we started to implement uh, across the state in 2019, New York City, 2020, just because of the sheer volumes of counselors that needed training. We're going to talk about strategies for designing and delivering a curriculum. Uh, we're going to meet some lessons, including the NISCA lesson repository, uh, and we're going to share that with you today. And then last but not least, we're going to identify, how do you, how do you identify student needs and school needs to support your curriculum? So very quickly, and I'm going to be mindful of the time here, um, the regs were amended, as many of you know, in 2017 which means they were updated and we finally came into the 21st century. Since the last time anything was updated went into effect in 1978. Probably some of you were just blinks on the screen at that point. Um, so the bottom line is that school counseling, now state aid is still using guidance core curriculum. The reason they're using the word guidance, school counseling slash guidance is because some of these lessons may be delivered by teachers and other professionals in the building. And ASCA has always told us everyone does guidance, meaning providing advice and information. And that's why they use the word guidance, but not everybody does counseling. And the whole idea is to address the areas that are true to our hearts social emotional development, academic development, and college and career readiness. So think of the curriculum as a framework. And it, what's, it, it's what keeps your lessons together in a way that makes sense. So this way we take our random lessons, we build them into a curriculum, and we'll also talk about what a scope and sequence is, how to organize them and move them developmentally from kindergarten or pre-K for some of you right through grade five. Um, and if anybody here uh, in their elementary position is handling beyond grade five, let us know, uh, because some of you may be in a K through eight school also. So tomorrow we're going to have a workshop on middle school. So the purpose of the curriculum, again, is about those three areas, is to make sure that our students acquire attitudes, and yes, attitudes are important. Knowledge about certain things and then the developing skills uh, so that they grow with us as they progress from grade level to grade level. So here's what's really important. The curriculum must reflect what our students really need and is developmentally appropriate. The curriculum that we're going to share with you today from NISCO, and it's free, folks, 312 lessons out there, it creates opportunities for students to achieve the ASCA standards, which are now called, since 2014, the ASCA Mindsets and Behaviors. Before that, we called them the National Standards or the National Student Standards. But in 2014, they were renamed and revised and then again in 2009, sorry, 2021, they were revised again. Um, heavy emphasis in the standards is social emotional development 
And I'm going to say, suggest social behaviors that go beyond social emotional development. Also our standards are about prevention, skills more than intervention. So folks, what are you currently using in your building? Are you writing your own lessons? Are you using a particular program that you are building, your principal bought, or your district adapted? Let us know what you're using because we want to collect these also and share with everybody. What are we seeing there? Anything yeah. exciting? So we're seeing second step, mm -hmm. uh, lessons created in-house, uh, too good for drugs, life skills, second step, in-house lessons, um, uh, more lessons on their own, zones of regulation, STAC, that's a new one for me. I look forward to learning as well, creating their own lessons, second step, second step, uh, creating own lessons, utilizing the ruler tools and the mm -hmm. program ruler, creating their own, lots of creating their own second step. Yes. Uh, Moo Zoom, I'll have to get more on that one. We're going to have creating. to learn more about some of these yeah. as we collect them so we can share them. Absolutely. Lots of creating their own and pulling mm -hmm. from other areas. Um, teacher right. pay teacher as well. Right. Thank you, Kathy. And so that's really the way most of us have developed our lesson. We see a need, we create a lesson, um, we deliver it. But lots of times our lessons are individual and they may not be connected to what we're doing next. So that's why we want to talk about curriculum, not just individual lessons. So what's really important from the state is that the regs tell us that we are to oversee the coordination, implementation, and evaluation of the curriculum. However, we can develop them, we can deliver them, but also we get input from and collaboration from faculty and others on staff. We also know that many of our, I'm gonna suggest teachers, especially around SEL at the elementary level are also delivering lessons. So we do wanna sort of tie these together. Our phys ed teachers might also be doing lessons around teamwork and getting along with others. So it's great if we, the counselors, can map out what's going on in our building so we understand where those gaps are. Again, lessons can be delivered and developed by teachers and other professionals. Uh, some, in some instances, we may have social workers delivering lessons. Um, Many of us have had lots of isolated lessons in place that now we're looking to tie together and it covers many important topics. We are going to send you, we meaning Dr. Rotunda, our executive director is going to send you the PowerPoint tomorrow and some resources. So folks, don't worry about taking a million and one notes. We have everything ready for you. Um, and again, that will go out to you tomorrow. So how do you decide what lessons should be delivered? Well, again, in my building, which might be different than Kathy's, um, I'm having issues around kids getting along with each other um, and kids being mean at times. It's not as much bullying as they're just being mean to each other. So I want to focus in on what's going on in my classrooms. What are the teachers telling me? And identify, I'm not necessarily going to write the lessons, but identify lessons that are going to help alleviate those issues. It's going to look different in kindergarten than it will in fifth grade. And then I'm gonna look at data. Is there something in my attendance data, my behavior data, um, or even in academics that are telling me my students need something more? So especially for my fifth graders, I'm thinking about the big bad middle school next year. And I know I want them to be organized and ready and I guess even, even being well aware of studying, how they study, maybe even learning styles a little bit, or maybe some things around uh, note-taking, and I'm going to work with my classroom teachers. And then I'm going to look to see, is everything I'm doing in SEL, especially for those of you that are working with Second Step, heavy SEL emphasis, what about that academic motivation and goal setting for kids, especially in the upper elementary grades? 
And what about college and career readiness? Now, I know we're not asking them to select a college, but we might want to do a couple of fun things in, in our grade levels in career. And so the state is telling us, please integrate academic CCR and SEL beginning with grade kindergarten. And then what are our families and teachers telling us that they know our students need? That's huge, especially at the elementary level. I'm sure we have grade level meetings or team meetings and lots of information is coming our way. So what can I use to develop lessons? Well, I'm gonna use the Ask a Mindsets and Behaviors because that's our national standard. We also have CDOS standards the career development and occupational standards, and they do exist for K-5 also. We have New York State SEL benchmarks. We also have, and I forgot to put this in here, the mental health curriculum and activities that have quite a few activities in there, and I will add that resource for, for when we send this out to you. You know what the improvement goals are in your building. What is your principal focusing on? You have access to data. Again, we already mentioned teacher and staff feedback, student needs, family and community needs. And it's going to differ. If you're in a small rural district in mid-state New York, or if you're in the Bronx in an urban area, one of the things that many of us lack in both rural and urban are resources. So also identifying the resources in your community, for folks that can come in and give you a hand. And even at times with the invitation and the approval of your principal to come in and do some lessons with you also co-teaching. So I am going to share with you our NISCA lesson plan repository. And it is based on, and I'm going to come out of this for a minute. It is based on and sorry, I didn't have it queued up. So it's niska.org. And Bob, can you see my screen or do I need to do a new share? Okay, so I'm going to niska.org curriculum. Sure. And here we go, school counseling K through 12 curriculum. There's a lot of information here, but what you're most concerned about Carol, yes, we, are, we are stuck on the, the repository slide. So okay, need to that's do what I was share. concerned about. I'm just going to yeah. do a new share. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes it moves and sometimes it doesn't want to move. So now I went to niska.org. Everybody can jot that down and I'll make sure that link is in the slides. And there's a lot of background information here. You know, Bob, those of us with older eyes need larger print. <laughs> and so I'm just going to go right to the lesson plans. Let's go to the heart and soul of this. And look what we've got. Now, I know it starts with 12, but not really. They are a little out of order. We're going to work with our web person to get them back in order. But I'm going to click on, where's my third grade? Third grade, right smack in the middle. I click on third grade. I'm going to click on CCR, and I've got eight lesson plans. Eight lesson plans that we felt would work for third graders. You might find them better at second grade or fourth grade. But the most important thing here, each grade level, and I'm just going to take a step back, and I'll go to second grade. Each grade level has the three areas, social, emotional. Can we still see those three? Okay, academic and college and career readiness. I'm gonna click on academic. And there we go, eight lessons to support academic development. So here we go, time management, motivation. I did it, goal setting. I'm proud to be a second grader. Second grade, great expectations. Let me go to one more grade level. Let's see, Kathy, pick a grade. Let's do kindergarten. Oh, where, where did kindergarten go? Here oh, we right, go. Right there. Yep. It's under ninth grade. Okay. 
Kindergarten, same thing, folks. I'm not going to do SEL because so many of you mentioned you have SEL programs, but look at that. Okay, and here we go. Eight lessons around college and career readiness. What do adults do? Goals no, needed for college. No, Say again. Oh, I'm also read that. School as my workplace, community jobs, all things that might be familiar to you. It was a sandwich. Say again. I think somebody was calling out or they're not on mute. I think. Okay. That's yeah. Okay. And so sorry, here we have, I don't know how that happens. I'm very sorry. No, no worries. No worries. I heard sandwich. I said, I'm getting hungry. Okay. <laughs> so when you click on, whoops. Where did it go? So here's an example of a lesson for kindergarten. Look at that grade K. So you can see CCR lesson five. Who am I? Unfortunately, I picked on day two. This is, as you can see, lesson two of two. And I'm just going to scroll. Most of these lessons you'll see checked off research base. They are on the ASCA template. And the reason NISCA decided to use the ASCA template is because it just uniformed and unified things across the state. Certainly, if you use something else in your district, you can take this information and adapt it or adopt it and use the template in your building. But we just felt, again, because it was a national template, it was just easy. Um, materials are right here. Look at that. Exactly what you need to be able to do this lesson, including pictures of workers, who am I, job titles, and paper. And then here's your script. I love this. An introduction to the lesson, the ob lesson objective, so what are we gonna to do today? Today, we will talk about different work that people do. And then how to teach the content. You will find lots of hot links in embedded in the lessons. We believe they work. Sometimes folks, you're gonna go on, you're gonna find a lesson not working the way it did because some organizations move things. And then if you just email, sorry, NISCA, um, then they'll let us know and we'll go back and we'll try and get it corrected for you. So here's what we're teaching, which is probably all of five minutes because they're in kindergarten. There's a story that you read that you'll download and then you practice. Write a description and a title for each job on a separate piece of paper. All the descriptions end with who am I? So it becomes a guessing game for the kindergartners. And then summarize it. Today we did this and we'll have our kids do a matching activity. So this lesson could work for small group or the entire class because it's kindergarten, 20 to 25 minutes. And then you'll see this one came from ESL Kid Stuff. Uh, and again, the lessons that we try to select all came from an organization or a resource that we vetted. And by that, what we tried to do is make sure the lessons were legitimate. These lessons were built by New York State counselors and New York City counselors. And we've been working on this. It will be two years in June, my goodness. And we are ready to do a refresh um, I will be candid, folks. We found a few things that we had to go back and change um, because some of the lessons may have been written five, six years ago, and we weren't as concerned about DEI terminology, and we weren't as concerned about using terms as girls will do this part of the lesson and boys will do this part of the lesson. So we've gone back and we've gone through just about all of them. I think we're down to three or four just to make sure that we're doing things in an inclusive environment. But I'm gonna be honest, if you find something and it doesn't work, please, please, please 
just let us know. So I'm going to close this lesson. And again, I'll just take you back for one minute. As I just jumped out of this, back to niska.org. New York State School Counselor Association. Am I on the website, Bob and Kathy? Okay. And then just go down to the left-hand column and click on curriculum. And there is the background and there are the <laughs> lessons. So what, and there's all the crazy people that worked on this. So what we want you to know more than anything else, and I'm just gonna close these and I'll go back to the PowerPoint, is that for those of you that are creating your own lessons and don't know where to get lessons, this is perfect. It's a great place to start. It's free, not just for NISCA members, but for everybody. Um, and so we're going to continue to build this website and we're going to continue to ask you to share with us your very best lessons. And we'll come up with a plan that will send you the template. You put your lesson on the template and then we'll have it reviewed and then up it goes. And this time it will have your name on it which I think will be absolutely awesome. So lesson built by Catherine Haley at Fayetteville Manlius. So back to the slide, I have a, I have just- a, I, have a I have a quick question. Please. Um, I put, yeah, no, I put, the, uh, I put the link to it um, in the chat. I was wondering how many people knew about this. Mm -hmm. One. One. Okay. I know. It's I, a well-kept secret, Bob. Okay. That's why we have to keep doing workshops and letting I, I people know. know this is the best resource ever. I think on yeah. the website, make that curriculum 45 font, 45 point font in bold. Yeah. Forget everything else on the NISCO website. It's like, um, okay, go ahead. And then the hot link here is for the lesson plan template, the blank. So we're good on that. And this is what it looks like. And this is what the NISCA website looks like. And thanks for putting that in there. We should, I'll add that to the slide also. You don't realize what you've forgotten until you realize what you've forgotten. Okay. So NISCA lesson plans, they're aligned with standards. So if your principal says, well, where did that lesson come from? It's standards-based, school counseling standards-based. You may want to add the academic standards. We did not put them in, nor did we put in to the lesson plan, how to measure success. That's going to be different from building to building. Uh, and so if you're delivering a unit or if you wanna deliver your third grade lessons and then do pre and post with the kids, you know, it's, it'll be up to you to how to do that. And that's something that we certainly can work on down the road. But most importantly, you have a script and the materials are attached. So let's see if we can do this. I did not set up a poll, um, but I think we can do this in chat. School counseling curriculum can only be delivered by school counselors. Is that a true or false? Let's see what we see going on in our chat. Do we see T's or F's? See lots of falses, Carol. All righty. Lots, lots of falses. Oh, perfect. Thank you, folks. You know, you know your responsibilities and you also know that the curriculum can be shared. Thank you. So let's go to the next one. Uh, just another reminder, most of our schools now are working with multi-tiered system of support. And this is a great way for all of us to start creating that strong foundation in tier one. Tier one, the all kids agenda, again, based on your student needs. And then it's a lot easier to look at who needs more in terms of group work and who needs more in both mandated and non-mandated individual counseling. So again, as you're talking to your administrators, and I wanna keep reminding you, you've gotta let your administrators know what's expected by NYSED, because this is the first time in all these years, and Dr. Rotunda and I have been around for a couple, first time we really have the muscle to push 
our school counseling program and our school counseling agenda for all kids. So use these regulations. And, and I know it's not something that we can do overnight. It takes time. Building a comprehensive program takes at least three to five years, but you do wanna make sure you have that administrative support. Okay, lesson delivery real quickly. The lessons that make up, as we know, are delivered by a multitude of people. They can be delivered, and, and Kathy's gonna share some of this with, with you by us or co-teaching with others. We can do this through classroom and large and small group. And here's the important thing. Thank goodness. NYSA doesn't say we have to do this number of lessons at each grade level in each area. It's up to you. And it's up to you based upon the needs of your students. And that's the most important part of all, that you know your kids better than anybody else. And you'll know what are the most important elements that need to be delivered in your school counseling curriculum. Think of those kids, by the time they get to fifth grade, the middle school counselors are gonna have nothing to do because they will have been perfect. So Carol, Kathy, be yes. Before, before I, I start, there was a request if you could show the pyramid slide again um, so sure. for viewing. There we go. And you'll have those folks. You're going to receive this when we send you a copy of the, of the PowerPoint. So again, tier one, tier two, tier three, this particular pyramid has come from ASCA's book on MTSS. I try and use national materials that had been vetted and have been tried and true across the country. So I guess if they're good for, hmm, if they're good for California, they're even better for New York. How's that? Okay. Any question on the on the pyramid, or we're good to go? We got to thank you for that. So, okay. if there's further questions, please just put that in the chat, and we can definitely do it. And um, Bob, let us know that they're planning a pre-conference on the MTSS at the November conference. So that's a a nice thing to look forward to uh, in November. Excellent, excellent. And awesome. it's my pleasure now uh, to introduce Kathy Haley. Catherine, who's <laughs> a K-4 school counselor in Enders Road Elementary, way up there in Fayetteville Manlius. Who gets the prize of knowing besides Bob Rotunda where Fayetteville Manlius is? Anybody Does else anybody know? No. I, I saw a, a, a colleague that may be that may know near Liverpool. So we're we're kind of near near one another. Okay, yes, outside of Syracuse. And it's sunny today, amen. <laughs> Kathy's, going to, Kathy's going to share um, her experiences with building curriculum and, uh, and, and hopefully this will answer some of the questions you have. Um, after Kathy's finished, um, we'll come back and we're going to have some Q&A time at the end also. Okay, Kathy, take it away. Thanks, Carol. And um, I am so delighted to be here. And as I was gathering my my thoughts for this this voice from the field, um, I guess I realized I've been in the counseling profession for 25 years, and um, 20 of them have been at the elementary level. And similar to Carol, I started at elementary and then took some time off to have my own children, went back to um, counseling, but at the middle school level, and I did return to elementary. It is my love. I um, really enjoy it. I've had the opportunity to work in a very small rural um, elementary school where we had two classes per grade level. I've worked in um a more rural but larger school district. And I'm currently in a suburban elementary school. My building is one of three elementary schools. It is the largest of the three. I have about 550 students K through four. So um, over, the, over the years, I understand what it is to develop your own curriculum. And I was listening to Carol and remember that very first uh, time of making a lesson, I just used what I had 
And um, I remember the book, um, Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day, which I'm sure many of you have heard, and use that as a way to teach a lesson on um, positive self-talk. What do we do to recognize a feeling? Trying to come up with different strategies, coming up with an activity at the end where the students created their own book of not terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day, but what are you going to do to make it a terrific, happy, not so bad, very good day, that type of thing. So how do we change the mindset? Back in the day, we didn't call it the growth mindset, but that was also what we were doing. Um, currently, it would connect with our um, ask us mindsets and um, behaviors, behaviors and mindsets. It would definitely connect with our SEL curriculum and the newest edition that um, New, York, New York State Ed has given us. Um, it would align with our CDOS standards. Um, but I was smiling as I was preparing this because back in the day, I also used our health curriculum that also provided um, standards that we could use. Thankfully, we've moved um, forward and we have our own standards that we can use. Um, one of the one of the questions is, but how do you how do you start your building your curriculum? That's part of it. If you're creating your own lessons and now Carol gave us a lot of different areas that we can look to to provide um, a developmental sequence. And um, there are lots of opportunities. Um, I wish we had thought of TPT back in the day, but that's also a wonderful opportunity as well. Um, if you're thinking, when do I start? And I'm, I'm wondering if we have any graduate students or if you're just beginning. I really thought of delivering a curriculum from my interview on. And I think that comes from our preparation in grad school. I was able to leave my program. One of my professors said, the only time in education that you'll be able to build your curriculum or order things is the moment you are hired. So have a list of things that you want to do. So I had a list of books. I had a list of activities at the time. And um, I was able to, to help with that. So that helped. One of the challenges I had beginning was having materials and curriculum. So use your libraries, use your librarian um, to have books. And now we call them social stories. We used to call them biblio, biblio stories at, this, at that time. Um, but how do you get the buy-in in the school? And I remember there was a really famous uh, movie that Billy Crystal was in, and you'll probably know which one I'm thinking, but they were having a quite an incredible scene. And the person next door, next to the table said, I'll take what they're having. And that's how <laughs> our, that's how I knew my curriculum is built. I went, I, I, I shared with the faculty, I shared at team meetings, I shared what it is, what a comprehensive program is. That means I wanna come into your classroom so I can teach all. If I can help with the foundational knowledge, if I can help for you and help your classroom, um, then it's going to be all the, all the easier as you are teaching to the teachers. Um, so I kind of had our, our first few buyers and then they told their peers and they said to me, Kath, I want you to come in and do that same lesson. So when you have success with one, it spreads. There's a ripple. If you're beginning your school program, if you're already there and they have um, a, a school program, you can always enhance that. Um, one thing that, that had worked for me um, in all of the years that I was teaching, and as Carol said, I found my people. I found some colleagues that wanted to co-teach, that had standards of their own, that if we worked together, had an opportunity to be able to be delivered together. So a few instances were, I worked with my school media um, specialist, our librarian. She needed to talk about um, computer skills and research. And I wanted to talk about learning styles and um, multiple intelligences and how that relates to a, um, school success. 
And how do, does that make you aware of careers that you might be interested in? And so we developed um, a few units for our third graders and our fourth graders. And we also worked with our um, tech, techno, technologist person, and we created a really digi a neat digital um, program for our students to, um, to have an opportunity to do. I've learned a lot, an awful lot and now use lots of data and try to do pre and post um, information as well as using um, different uh, criterion. We are fortunate that we have been using a screener. So that's one point that we can use to help um, not only help tier one, but it also helps with tier two and tier three needs. Um, but what that also helps is if there happens to be a classroom that has a, as Carol said, if there is a problem with getting along with others, we can create a new lesson to, to get to everybody. I also wanted to share, how do you know, um, how do you know if it's working? Right. And so aside from the data that I just said, there's some anecdotal data that I wanted to share. And that is um, I've sorry, my building has moved from me creating individual lessons, but I do use them at times to doing across the board um, second step. So there's um, breadth and width right with what they're doing. So the kindergarten development kind of continues through to fourth grade. And I had taught the, if you do something by accident and all of the script that goes along with it, you say, I'm sorry, it was an accident. Are you okay? How can I help? And our building was doing our Friday fun walk and across there were the bill, uh, sorry, the corner, somebody had fallen. And I reached down to see if I could help. Well, the girl coming next to me said, Mrs. Haley, you are so kind. You knock somebody down, but you help them up and you're helping with this. You said you were sorry and you asked if they were okay. So the lessons that take place in the classroom, you hear throughout the building. So the common language, what has helped from your curriculum also can help within uh, the building. Um, as an aside, or I should say as another note, we also wanna make sure that, I'm gonna try to steal a, a phrase that Mr. Rotunda, Dr. Rotunda uses, and that is, if you don't have a seat at the menu, or a seat at the table, you can be cut from the menu. Did I get that sort of right, Dr. Rotunda? So, so close. Here's the thing, if you, are on some of the committees, you start to hear what some of the concerns are. And the reason our building is now using second step is that one of the other buildings was using it in one grade level and it was great for the building. And so I was part of our building planning team and with some other teachers, we were able to pilot in one grade level, the use of one kit. So. It's expensive to buy the kit, but we were going to pilot it. And there was such great feedback that we were able to continue that grade level. And then the following year, add the next grade level. So as Carol said, it takes possibly some years to develop that comprehensive program with an intentional direction. Um, and now I'm very proud to say that we are using it K-4. We can use it um, together. In different buildings, we also have teachers that also help with the teaching of the curricula. So that was um, that was my experience from the beginning to the end and where I am. And what I want to say is no matter where you are, find your people so that you can build your team and then deliver the curriculum. It makes a big difference. So that's my and that's a great story and Kathy I just had one question that made me think while you were talking uh -huh. um, because you do have second step as your foundation so um what do you use 
to fill in the blanks, like with the college and career things, or, and again, I know that's it's a little bit of a stretch for some of, but we have NISCA lessons and the academic pieces, which are kind of embedded a little bit. The second step, like you said, is pricey and it's predominantly SEL. So how do you fill in the blanks there? So we, I, I also need to continue to learn and, and enhance it in a different way. We usually have a career fair and we are able to provide opportunities for students to do, to witness hands-on career opportunities and our community comes in and, and helps with that. So we're able to work with career awareness that way. Um, before field trips were a little bit different. Um, we also were able to, the second grade curriculum also allowed um, for the career awareness and discussion. So that teaming approach with our um, second grade team also provided for that. Um, we also, I alluded to the multiple intelligence um, unit that I did with my librarian. And at the end of that lesson, they created a digital portfolio about the different careers that they had researched that fit their intelligence that they felt spoke to them. So there are opportunities. There are always more opportunities that I'm looking for to, to, to enhance that. And Kathy, I think what you said, the whole idea of collaborating and teaming with the other professionals just enhanced what you're doing. So you've got those opportunities going. So thank you so much. And folks, we'll, we'll have a few minutes at the end. So if anybody has any questions for Kathy, um, I, I do wanna say we were to have a, another visitor today, uh, Lisa Malati. Uh, they, she had a family emergency at three o'clock. So um, we all wish she could have been here with us, but I'm sure we'll hear from her at some other time. So Kathy, Thank you from the bottom of our hearts uh, for not just being here today, but for going above and beyond. Thank you. Keeping you busy today. My pleasure. Okay. Thank you. So uh, before we go into Q&A, do we have any burning question there? Or I'll just keep going. I do see um, a question and, and some information. Uh, Leslie mentioned that Naviance is coming out with an elementary program. So there are always programs that are out there. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> that we can use. And I I will add, just like you said, there are, and like some of the people put in the chat before, I definitely pull from different programs. So zones of regulation, the ruler program, they're different opportunities that we can use right. to enhance. Um, the question that Shauna asked is screener, can you please square with share which screener we screener you use? It's easier read than said. Um, we had been using a free screener called the SRSS that I um, can give information to um, that, that had been a nice um, beginner. This year, our district um, opted to start with a different screener for K-12 and it's called the BIMIS-2. So we are just beginning with that um, uh, information. Thank you. Okay, we have... Um, about eight minutes or so. So folks, what what did you hear that was helpful? Or what did you hear that you can use from what Kathy shared with us? Let's just give that one second in chat for people to reflect a little bit on the wealth of information Kathy, that you provided for us. And let's see if we see anything there. It's either Kathy, it's you or mm -hmm. Dr. Rotunda see anything there? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. So if there is something there, please subscribe just a, it in chat. Yep. Just a comment. I think Shape also has screeners. So that's really good to know. Thank you so much, Leslie. Yeah. And New York City is using something called DESA, D E S S A, I believe. And I forgot what company mm -hmm. uh, is producing that. But I, I will say the one thing that I heard that Kathy emphasized is although they have a foundational program, 
that they pay for, that there are lots of other resources because of all the collaboration and teaming with the other professionals, which is how you get access to the kids and why your principal buys into all of this. So those are the things, folks, that are super, super important um, because we can't work in a vacuum. Kathy said it and she quoted Bob Rotunda, the bottom line is, unless our principals understand, especially if you're new to doing this and trying to get access to kids and access to teachers, um, access to kids through getting access to teachers, sometimes it's a hard sell. So we have to keep working at it. And there are a ton of free programs out there. And we'll provide you with some of that information also, because second step is pricey. Mm -hmm. Okay. So... What's one thing you can do now to build your curriculum for next year? What can you do now? It is March. I think of March as June because we have spring break coming up and then it's in the testing and into the home stretch. But what can you do now to start building a better developed curriculum, not just lessons for the following school year? What can you do? Let's see what people come up with. And I'm just gonna go so I can see my chat. See. Great. So Leslie's indicated that Harmony is free mm -hmm. and BOCES has programs that can be implemented as a program. Um, that's a great, great one. I think, um, and I'll put it in the, in the chat, I think Overcoming Obstacles is also a free uh, You're curriculum right. as well. You're um, right. Yeah, we have a and comment. And I'm going to jot, I'm going to jot one in here also. Okay. Uh, student success skills, which is very reasonable. Um, it's not free, but it's very inexpensive. Mm -hmm. So let's just drop these in so people can grab them. Student success skills. And that's one, if you have any grant money, it's been vetted evidence-based. It's one of uh, two school counseling programs that are considered evidence-based. So grant money definitely pays for that. Okay, let's see if anybody else. So if there's anything somebody wants to share that they think they can do um, to build their curriculum for next year, just drop it in and share it with us. We have someone that is very happy uh, with the web page and the lesson plans and excited to know that it is, it is accessible in there. That was great to know. Excellent. So we're going to go into, we've got about six minutes, um, and we want to make sure that we're available to answer your questions. So one of the things that we would like you to do is give us feedback, and it's actually give NISCA feedback, because we need to know what else do counselors need to do the very, very best job possible, especially with the regulations. So we do have what we call an exit ticket. You guys are all familiar with exit tickets and I just dropped it in the chat and we'll do that again. But let's go into some Q and A now and see, and I'll just leave this last slide up, see what else people need. What else, what questions they have or comments or something that you wanna share with us, that would be awesome also. So I'll, I will say that um, Holly had a takeaway to review this year's lessons with what worked and what didn't work and what to move around for next year, see what, see what she can do. Excellent. Thank you, Holly. Any questions, folks? Anything they want to know? This is this is a great opportunity. We still have a few minutes. We wanted to make sure we we left that five minutes at the end. I have a question for the group. Do you feel like your uh, you feel like your administrators understand what you're supposed to be doing? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Still no. Still no. We're gonna we're gonna um we're going to have a uh, a series coming up in late April in May um to help train your administrators. So be looking for those. 
Oh, Dr. Rotunda, that's a rough word. You can't train an administrator. <laughs> but we're going, we're going to help educate our administrators. <laughs> yeah. Somebody, yeah, Show somebody them. yelled at somebody yelled, we, we don't do training. Training's for dogs. Uh, uh, oh, I love oh. that. Yeah. No, and some of you, and some of you are putting in there. Some of them get it and some of them don't. Yeah. But we want to be able to help you. And also on the exit ticket, what else would be helpful in terms of curriculum? You know, what else do you need in terms of building it in a way that makes the most sense for you? Um, administrators understanding our role and that we can't do it all on our own. Absolutely, Melissa. Um, so much, so much, so much, so much is, is about just understanding how we can support and help our kids. Is there a specific needs assessment? Um, Julie, what I would do is go to um, UMass Amherst to the, um, gosh, I forget, I'm trying to remember, the School Counseling Institute, um, because they have a ton of needs assessments that they've collected over the years. Uh, Bob, does NISCA have needs assessments stored at all on the NISCA website? But UMass Amherst, there's a center for like evidence-based school counseling yeah. and check through those resources. It's not curriculum, but there's definitely resource tools such as needs assessment. And that's where I go and I borrow one and adapt it. Let's see, anybody else folks, questions? So we had um, one of our uh, members said a lot of schools, at least on Long Island, go up to sixth grade. So it's harder to find lessons appropriate for them. So it's it's nice to know, th this is my comment, nice to know that the NISCA repository may have some um, lessons that may help for that. Yeah. Um, and we've got a lot of rural schools, K-8. So you'll jump into, you know, and you click, you'll just click on the grade level. And as I mentioned, if you say something, say something, you know, because we've been going back and just reviewing all 312 to make sure that they are inclusive and appropriate for 2023. Some of the lessons that we adapted came from Missouri and they had a huge statewide curriculum, but they were written, you know, like around 2015, 16, 17. So we know we knew that things needed updating. And anybody using Zello? Sarah wants to know. So I, just, I will. Is that is that how you say it? <laughs> okay. I, I thought it was Zello. I don't know I don't, why. I have no idea. And we have two more messages. Maybe not. Ah, there we go. Somebody found the UMass School Counseling Center. Perfect. And Vicki says my district does. Let's see here. Yeah, they uh, they always advertise at our at our uh, conference. Okay, I should have paid better attention. No, I'm I'm I'm, I'm, I'm always curious about why a company would change their name from Career Cruising to something that's unpronounceable. But that's just me. <laughs> or something we have no clue what it is, right? Yeah. That's just so, me. um, just a uh, quick before we go to closure, in case there's anything else, remember how important you are, folks to the lives of those you meet, how important you can be to the people you may never even dream of. Remember every student we work with has so many other folks around them and supporting them that as we help our students, they're also helping the others and their families and their friends. Um, remember every time we get together, you've contributed and we've all interacted together. So I wanted to say thank you um, and let you know that when you receive the materials, there's a few more things in the appendix, tips and strategies. Um, and we just wanna make sure that everybody's got everything that they need before we wrap up today. So you UMass for needs assessments. Folks, you can use pre and post as a way of measuring success. When you look at the NISCA repository, you'll see some of the lessons are units of two or three small units uh, so that you have a lot of flexibility. The lessons may not be perfect for the grade level you're working with. 
put them in the grade level that makes sense. All you have to do is download it. It's a Word document and adapt it. So I'm going to say thank you and thank you for my partner in crime here. Kathy, appreciate all that you did today. And Dr. Rotunda, anything else here? Yeah, I just want to remind everybody that we'll get out a certificate of attendance tomorrow with links to the recording as well as the PowerPoint and stuff. So That's right. We've been, we've been recorded. Yes, we have. <laughs>